everyone welcome back to my youtube channel dr varki softa mother tutorials today we will discuss about dacrocystitis in particular the congenital dacrocystitis so in this video i will be discussing about how this congenital dacrocystitis occurs how to go about a case when the child comes with a watering of the eyes and what is the management plan for the congenital dacrocystitis cases so without much delay let's begin our video to understand this dacrocystitis in a better way i think you will have to look into my previous videos on the anatomy and the physiology of the lacrimal apparatus and the watering of eyes where i have covered various tests for the watering of the eyes after that if you watch this video on dacrocystitis it will be very easy for you to understand okay dacrocystitis is one of the short cases which is given in your practicals and it is also frequently asked main question as well as five mark question so be thorough with this topic on dacrocystitis so whenever you tell the diagnosis as dacrocystitis in your case presentation the immediate question will be define dacrocystitis most of the students will tell it as inflammation of the lacrimal gland since the gland is little familiar word for them they will tell it as inflammation of the lacrimal gland but it is the inflammation of the lacrimal sac that is dacrocystitis so let's dissect this word dacrio cyst and itis itis as all of you know it is the inflammation the dacrio means anything which is related to tears okay so cyst is the sac so the tear sac inflammation is the dacrocystitis that is the inflammation of the lacrimal sac so what is the name given for the inflammation of the lacrimal gland that is called as dacroadenitis okay this is inflammation of the lacrimal glands don't get confused cystitis is inflammation of the lacrimal sac inflammation of the gland is called as dacroadenitis so the dacrocystitis can be classified into the congenital and the acquired okay congenital dacrocystitis and the acquired dacrocystitis so the congenital dacrocystitis is also known as dacrocystitis neonatorum okay so this congenital dacrocystitis is also commonly known as congenital nasolacrimal duct obstruction or cnldo okay so in this video i am discussing mainly on the congenital dacrocystitis okay so what causes this congenital dacrocystitis so normally as you know the anatomy there is nasolacrimal duct okay which is draining the tear film from the lacrimal sac to the inferior meatus thereby into the nasopharynx so in newborns in about um, 5 to 20% of the newborns this nasolacrimal duct is either partially canalized or there is obstruction at the valve of hasner as you know it is the valve which is present at the inferior end of the nasolacrimal duct or sometimes there can be even obstruction at the superior part of the nasolacrimal duct as well sometimes the obstruction can be secondary to the membranes in the nasolacrimal duct or it can be secondary to some of the debris or even it can be the bony obstruction in the nasolacrimal duct so it has something to do with the nasolacrimal duct obstruction so the causes can be either because of the non canalization of the nasolacrimal duct or the partial canalization of the nasolacrimal duct or because of obstruction by the valves that is valve of fastener or the valve of frozen muller or because of the membranes which are present in the nld or because of the debris or because of the bony obstruction so these are the causes for congenital dacrocystitis so what happens once there is obstruction to the nasolacrimal duct so whenever there is obstruction to the nasolacrimal duct the tear film which is coming into the sac is pulled here only as you know the flowing water is clean but the stagnant water becomes polluted easily similarly the stagnant tear film which is there in the sac leads to the infection by the organism that is staphylococcus or streptococcus and even the pneumococcus so there will be infection of this sac leading to the dacrocystitis so how this babies of dacrocystitis present to you they will usually have watering which is unusual in the newborn children so watering usually starts from 2 to 3 months of age but before that only if the child is having watering it means that there is some pathology so the children will present with the watering or even it, there can be mucoid discharge matting of the eyelashes and when you do your regurgitation test that is when you press over the lacrimal sac area there is regurgitation of the clear fluid or the mucopurulent fluid depending upon the infection there sometimes there can be even the swelling over the nasolacrimal sac area that is medial to the inner canthus the child can have swelling because of this dacrocystitis so these are the symptoms of dacrocystitis that is watering mucopurulent discharge swelling and the matting of the eyelashes so whenever a child presents to you with a watering so it is a serious condition either the child is having the congenital dacrocystitis or the child can be suffering from the ophthalmia neonatorum or even the congenital glaucoma okay so these are the close differential diagnosis per your congenital dacrocystitis 
So whenever you are examining the case of congenital dactylosteritis, always look for conjunctiva and the cornea for repeated infection which occurs because of this dactylosteritis. Okay. So now we have made a diagnosis of congenital dactylosteritis. So now how to treat this case? The first management line is always massaging. Okay. So massage. So this was the treatment plan for congenital dactylosteritis given by Dr. Krigler. Hence it is also known as the Krigler's method of massaging okay so here you will have to press over the nasolacrimal sac area with your with your little finger you will have to press over the nasolacrimal sac area and then press taking the finger downward along the nose okay so doing it in a proper way is very important in the treatment of the congenital dacrocystitis so how often it should be done it should be done at least in four sessions and in each session at least 10 strokes should be given and the massaging should be followed by installation of the antibiotic eye drops into the conjunctival sac. And if this procedure is properly followed, then at least in 70 to 80 percent of the children, the nasolacrimal obstruction is relieved. So, how this massaging will work? It will create a positive hydrostatic pressure inside the sac, thereby, with a pressure gradient, it will open up the obstruction and it will relieve the nasolacrimal duct obstruction. Next modality of treatment is the syringing. This is similar to the lacrimal syringing which I have explained in my previous video. So here the saline is injected from the lower punctum. So it will fill the lacrimal sac and because of the pressure from the saline, the obstruction is overcome. Okay. And how often the syringing can be done? It can be done once in a week or once in two weeks and you can wait for the improvement in the symptoms. Even when the syringing is not working, the child is not relieved of its watering symptoms. Then the next step is the probing. Okay. So the probing is done under J is done under general anesthesia by using Bowman's probe. Okay. So the so the Bowman's probes are used here. Probe is passed from the inferior punctum. Okay. And then it is directed downwards towards the nasolacrimal duct. Thereby you are mechanically opening the obstruction. If the probing fails at first sitting, you can repeat the probing after three to four weeks again to treat the case. The next option is the balloon catheter dilatation. So here we have a probe with inflatable balloon which will open up the nasolacrimal duct. So even if this balloon catheter dilatation is also not working, you can go for silicone tube intubation of the nasolacrimal duct. Otherwise, the last resort in the treatment of the congenital dacrocystitis is DCR that is dacrosis to rhinostomy surgery you will have to do. Okay. So the treatment options in the management of this congenital dacrocystitis are the massaging, syringing, probing, balloon catheter dilatation or the silicon tube intubation at the NLD. The final one is the DCR for the dacrosis to rhinostomy. So if you don't treat this congenital dacrostatis, the child can have repeated conjunctivitis or even there can be the corneal infections leading to corneal ulcer formation and even the sac can go into the formation of mucosal. So it is better to intervene these children at the earliest. Okay. So in the next video, I will be dealing with acute and chronic dacrostatis followed by the DCR surgery. Hope this video on congenital nasolacrimal duct obstruction or congenital dacrostatis is useful to all of you. If you like my videos, please do subscribe to my channel. Press the bell icon for further notifications. Please do like and share my videos.